Good morning. Good morning. And welcome to the celebration of the first Sunday of Advent. A special welcome to any visitors among us. All are invited to enjoy hospitality in the gathering room following this Mass. Our presider is Father Patrick Kennedy. With respect for the celebration of the Mass, please silence all cell phones and electronic devices at this time. Please stand as we begin our liturgy. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. As we begin this season of Advent, we do so by blessing our Advent wreath. And I think I have the instructions here someplace. My brothers and sisters, today we begin a new liturgical year in the church with the season of Advent. In this holy season, the Advent wreath marks our progress towards the feast of Christmas. We'll bless our Advent wreath and pray that we may always be ready to welcome the presence of Christ in our lives. And let us pray. Lord our God, your church joyfully awaits the coming of its Savior, the Son of Justice, who enlightens our hearts and dispels all darkness. Pour forth your blessings upon us and upon this wreath. May the circle evergreen remind us of God's all-encompassing love. May the light of these candles reflect the splendor of Christ, who is Lord forever and ever. Let us now call to mind our need for salvation and peace that Christ alone can bring. Thank you. 
May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. And let us pray. Almighty God, grant your faithful the resolve to run forth to meet your Christ. With righteous deeds it is coming, so that gathered at his right hand, we may be worthy to possess the heavenly kingdom. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated now as we listen to the words from Scripture. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. The days are coming, says the Lord, when I will fulfill the promise I made to the house of Israel and Judah. In those days, in that time, I will raise up for David a just shoot. He shall do what is right and just in the land. In those days, Judas shall be safe and Jerusalem shall dwell secure. This is what they shall call her, the Lord, our justice. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. Brothers and sisters, 
May the Lord make you increase and abound in love for one another and for all, just as we have for you, so as to strengthen your hearts to be blameless in holiness before our God and Father at the coming of our Lord Jesus with all his holy ones. Amen. Finally, brothers and sisters, we earnestly ask and exhort you in the Lord Jesus that as you receive from us how you should conduct yourselves to please God, and as you are conducting yourselves, you do so even more. For you know what instructions we gave you through the Lord Jesus. The word of the Lord. Please stand and we'll acclaim the gospel in song. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory Jesus said to his disciples, There will be signs in the sun, the moon, and the stars, and on earth nations will be dis in dismay, perplexed by the roaring of the sea and of the waves. People will die in fright in anticipation of what is coming upon the world. For the powers of heaven will be shaken, and then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. But when these signs begin to happen, stand erect and raise your heads. Your redemption is at hand. Beware that your hearts do not become drowsy, from carousing and drunkenness and the anxieties of daily life. And that day may catch you by surprise like a trap. For that day will assault everyone who lives on the face of the earth. Be vigilant at all times and pray that you have the strength to escape the tribulations that are imminent and to stand before the Son of Man. The Gospel of the Lord. I'd like to welcome all of you here this morning, and uh, especially our visitors who have come here today. Um, I know there's a big thing going on at the convention center in downtown here, um, cheerleading or volleyball or something. Little kids with painted faces were in church last night. I don't know if there's anybody here from that operation today, but um, they were here last night. And So if you're downtown visiting and you've stopped here today, we're very glad that you've done that. As you can imagine, we get many visitors in downtown Minneapolis and here at St. Olaf. And... Uh, here at St. Olaf, we rely on our visitors to help us along uh, with our ministries throughout the year. And um, I'm hoping that 
when the collection basket goes by, you'll feel so inclined to leave a little bit of your treasure here. Uh, we would be very grateful. Um, it does a lot of good, and um, it helps us along our way. So when it does go by, um, please remember that, and I ask you to be generous, and thank you for your generosity. I'd also like to welcome those who join us on TV. Um, this Mass is broadcast on the local cable channel 6, tonight at 8 o'clock and tomorrow morning at 10, and then it goes on YouTube and on our website, and uh, you can watch it a few weeks from now or probably 20 years from now if you want to. But the fact of the matter is is that uh, we know that there are a lot of people who cannot get out, not just because of the weather today, but because they're homebound, and they uh, believe that this liturgy is is a privilege for them to participate in, and they're very glad that we provide this opportunity for them to participate with us each Sunday. It's a privilege for us to do that too. So we welcome you, and uh, we pray for you, and we ask that you continue to pray for us as we celebrate this first Sunday of Advent. Last night at four o'clock, it was kind of dicey out, if you were out and about, or if you were looking out the window, and. We had more people at the 4 o'clock Mass than we do when the temperature is 82 degrees and it's sunny outside. So in my magnanimous, um, in my magnanimous disposition as pastor, I offered them all a plenary indulgence for being here. And of course, there are a few people who say, can you do that? Well, I don't know if I can do it or not, but I did, you know. <laughs> I'm the ranking prelate. Do you see anybody else? No just me. At any rate, I said to them, um, uh, it's only good if you don't make it home tonight. <laughs> and if you go to heaven and you present this plenary indulgence, if you need a little boost to get through the door, and God says to you, well, where'd you get that? You can say you got it from Father Kennedy. And if God says who? Put the plenary indulgence in your pocket and forget about it. <laughs> but sadly, you don't get a plenary indulgence today because the roads are clear. And I got here. You know, I live upstairs, so I got here so you can get here too. Don't be calling the bishop and telling him I'm giving out plenary indulgences. <laughs> You know, I don't know about you, but as we begin the first Sunday of Advent, um, the scriptures invite us to stay alert, to be watchful, to be awake, to be vigilant. And that's not easy to do. I'm here to tell you, I can do it for a few minutes, I can even look out the window for a few hours and wait to see what happens. But after that, I get bored, and I've got other things to do, and my mind is preoccupied by certain things so that I lose track of the fact that I'm really supposed to be here waiting for the time to come when Jesus comes in all his glory. And I'm not drowsy, I'm not drunk, I'm not distracted in any way, shape, or form. I'm simply sitting, sitting there waiting it to come on. None of us do that. And if we do do it, we only do it for a few moments. But I'm not so sure that that's what the readings invite us to do as we begin this season of Lent. I think that the readings invite us to not pay attention for once and for all or forever and just wait for things to happen. I think the readings are more particular than that. And I think Jesus, who talks to his disciples about what is to come in the days ahead, often in other places remind them that the best way you and I can be vigilant and watchful and awake is to participate in this day alone. That has its challenges too, to be present to this day. It sounds easy, 
but it's not. A lot of times we live unconsciously. So we're moving through the day and we knock around with the people we live with and yeah, we might say hello and if we're not mad at them, we'll talk to them for a few minutes, but we keep on going and at the end of the day, what have we done? Who have we seen? What have we participated in? And now, how has this day been the best day of our life so far? That no matter what happens next, we have left, lived our best hour. I think that's what he's really saying. Because really, when you think about it, yesterday's gone, tomorrow hasn't come yet, and we might not wake up tomorrow. I hope you all do, and I hope I do too. But there will be a day and time when that doesn't happen. So what do we do with today? How do we stay awake today while we're awake? How do we stay aware while you and I are present in the world and not unconscious in sleep? How do we stay vigilant in the ways in which we can help those in our midst by being attentive and by watching and by listening carefully? You know, a lot of that begins with our own first. I've said this before, and I say it more for myself than maybe you, but we can get into a routine as individuals, and a lot of times we can forget. We don't see. We don't listen well. We're awake, but we're not aware. And we don't watch for those opportunities to be able to extend ourselves to others and maybe them to us as we stand in need together. You know, a lot of times you and I think that because we're familiar with all these people we live with, they know what we think. Nothing could be farther from the truth. You know, I know he or she loves me. I don't need to hear it. Yes, we do. We do need to hear it. We need to have somebody open up their mouth and say, you know what, I love you. I love you. And let them gush and let them get embarrassed about that. But it touches their heart to know that they're not alone. I forgive you. We don't do it by giving somebody the cold shoulder. We don't do it by being disinterested in what they're doing until all of a sudden we warm up to them again. And again, we open up our mouths and we say that, I forgive you for what you just did. That touches people's hearts as well. That shows people we're awake, we're alive, and we're moving with them and hopefully they are moving with us. Being kind to people and doing things that go out of the ordinary simply because we care. All of those sound very simple. And my guess is, is if you were to take an assessment of yourself and myself too, you'd say, well, I do that. Do we really do that? Are we really awake? Are we really attentive? Are we watchful? to the people we encounter today and do something with those encounters and be open to the fact that somebody who encounters us may do some of those things for us as well and we receive them as graciously as they're given. One of the things that Jesus reminded his disciples was is that they could stand secure in the midst of whatever came in their life because they knew that they weren't alone. And he reminded them of that over and over and over again. He said, you don't have to be afraid of anything or anyone because I'm right there with you. And even after he was raised from the dead and ascended into heaven, he said, I'm giving you my Holy Spirit so that you know and are convinced that my presence is part of your daily life 
and it will console you. It will be compassionate towards you. It will bring about kindness in your life. It will allow you to know you're forgiven. And most importantly, you're deeply loved by me every day you breathe air on this earth. That's what he expects his disciples to do. That's how we stand erect, because we're busy about doing the things he has done for us. We're being present. We're showing the gifts that he's given to us, and we're giving them to other people. And in all of that, as we do that on a daily basis, no matter what happens to us in the days to come, or maybe even this afternoon or tonight, we will always stand firm in his presence and in his love because we know that not only is our redemption near at hand in some distant day, but we see it in our words and our deeds right here and now. And we are blessed and so are the people we encounter each day of our life. We'll stand and we'll profess our faith. <clears throat> I believe in one God, Father the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son, God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, substantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the Holy Spirit was incarnate to the Virgin Mary and became men. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. He rose again on the third day, in with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. His kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And let us pray. Lord Jesus, guide the church and our shepherds on our path of knowledge and wisdom. We pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus, teach leaders of nations to use their earthly power in service of your reign of peace and justice. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus, open the gates of salvation and grace to those preparing to receive the sacraments of the church. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord Jesus, rescue with your love all who are bound by chains of suffering, need, fear, or sorrow. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus, form us into your image so that we might bear your saving presence in our time and place. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus, 
Shine your radiant light on all our departed loved ones and all who have died. We pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty God, we offer you these and all of our prayers, and as we place them before you, we trust you will bless us along our way that someday we may enjoy your kingdom where you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated now as we make preparation for the Eucharist and we bring up the gifts. my brothers and sisters, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Father, the Almighty. Lord, accept, we pray, these offerings we make, gathered from among your many gifts to us, that we may, what you grant us, to celebrate devoutly here below, gain for us the prize of eternal redemption. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through your Son, Jesus Christ. For he assumed at his first coming the lowliness of human flesh, and so fulfilled the design you formed long ago. He opened for us the way to eternal salvation, that when he comes again in glory and majesty, and all at last is made manifest, we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which we now dare to hope for. And so with the heavenly angels, 
and all the saints, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy and to be glorified, O God, who love the human race. You always walk with us on this journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son present in our midst when we are gathered by his love and when, as once for his disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and he breaks the bread. Father, we ask that you send forth the power of your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may become for us the, the body and the blood of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of his last supper, he took bread and said a blessing. He broke the bread, he gave it to his disciples, and he said, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. When supper was ended, he took the chalice, and he gave you thanks. He gave the chalice to his disciples and he said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you've seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again. We offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the oblation of your church in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us. Grant that by the power of the spirit of your love, we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son in whose body and blood we have communion. Bring your church, O Lord, to perfect faith and charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Bernard, our Archbishop, and the entire people you have made for your own. Keep our eyes open to the needs of our brothers and sisters. Inspire us in word and in action to comfort those who labor and are burdened. Help us to serve each other truly after the example of Christ and at his command. May your church stand as a living witness to truth and to freedom, to peace and to justice, that all people may be raised up to a new hope. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of Christ and all the dead whose faith is known to you alone. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face. In the resurrection, give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us when our earthly pilgrimage is done, that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever, there in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with the apostles, the martyrs, 
Saint Olaf and all the saints, we shall praise you and we shall exalt you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Let us join together and pray in the words that Jesus gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses. Forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our day. By the help of your love and mercy, may we always be free from sin, safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not in our sins, but on the faith of your church, Graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And may the peace of Jesus Christ be with all of you. And with your spirit. Let's offer each other some sign of Christ's peace. Peace. You too. Thanks. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
the captives of Jacob. You forgave the guilt of your people and covered all their sins. The Lord will bestow his loving kindness and on earth will yield its fruit. You averted all your rage and turned back the heat of your us back, O oh God our Savior, put an end to your grievance against us. The Lord will bestow his loving kindness, and the Lord will yield its fruit. Will you not restore your people may rejoice in you. Let us see, O oh Lord, your mercy, and grant us your salvation. The Lord will bestow his loving is near for those who fear him and his glory will dwell in our land. Merciful love and faithfulness have met. Justice and peace have kissed. Faithfulness shall spring from the earth and justice look down from heaven.
Please stand and let us pray. Lord, may these mysteries in which we have participated guide us, we pray, for even now as we walk amid passing things, you teach us by them to love the things of heaven and to hold fast to what endures. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Each Wednesday after the noon mass, we've been having a free organ recital, and we continue that this Wednesday. Chris Stroh will offer that organ recital. Uh, you're invited to join us if you're downtown. This coming Saturday, December 8th, is the Feast of the Immaculate Conception of Mary, a holy day of obligation. We will have two Masses, uh, one on Friday evening at 5.15 and one at noon on Saturday. You're invited to attend those Masses, if, or one of those Masses, if you'd like. Well, even if you don't like, it's a holy day of obligation. <laughs> Jesus. You know, this is all on TV, and I know by the end of the day, I'm going to be getting it from somebody, I'm sure. The Lord be with you. And with Almighty God bless us, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Let's go in peace to love and serve the Lord. <laughs>